Hello my friends. I had a request to compare the most recent version of the Model 70 Winchester with the pre-64 Model 70 Winchester that you know I think is a great rifle and a lot of people agree. So I have two on the table and um, it's going to take some tricky camera work. I'll do my best to compare these rifles but before we go to the rifles I just wanted to say up front that when one studies firearms or maybe anything else you notice that the original thought and the original version and this probably applies to more things than just firearm design some of the original ideas are the best ideas then efficiencies of production dominate and other things dominate the market affects how manufacturers produce different products and like I said this probably extends to all kinds of things in life and then you spend a whole bunch of time in kind of a wasteland producing products and doing things that don't make much sense and are inferior but then you realize you have to somehow try to return to where you came from in the first place and this video is about that return so the w current Winchester Model 70 I bought an Alaskan actually specifically for this video uh, because of one viewer who had some good comments which you don't all see anyhow uh, so I took apart the pre-64 Model 70 and I took apart the Alaskan and um, as you know, I don't like doing these gun autopsies, um, although I shouldn't say that. These aren't autopsies. These guns are very much alive. But in any event, uh, this is the stock of the current production Model 70. This is the stock of the pre-64. Uh, sorry, the pre-64 current. And um, you can see now, again, I buy these guns from gun stores. I don't know. Maybe you want, one of you can tell me whether this is factory. This is typical glass bedding. It looks to me like it was from the factory. And all they're trying to accomplish is a precision mating of the receiver with the stock. You can see the serial number in there. This is the pre-64, and there's no glass bedding. Now, people like glass bedding everything for the past 20 years. Not that it's really necessary, but this one is still from the factory. There's no glass bedding. So you can decide for yourselves which stock is better. I mean, probably there's some kind of modern finish on this stock. The check ring looks to me machine cut. This was, I'm sure, hand cut on the pre-64. You've got the cutout for the bolt handle. You've got a recoil lug in here. Uh, probably I should mention this is from a 300 Winchester Magnum. This is a um, 300 Holland and Holland, and they didn't put any anything to to reinforce the recoiling area. Maybe they should have. Maybe they shouldn't have. Anyway, this one has a recoil pad, and this one has what you would expect. You've seen these before. Sometimes they're aluminum. Uh, sometimes they're polymer. Anyhow, so there's the pre-64 and the and the current production Alaskan and Now we'll move to the action quickly. So there are a lot of things that I see just because I Spend a lot of time looking at these kinds of things and people ask me questions So I want to have intelligent answers. This is the pre-64 and as you know, I try to look for weaknesses or flaws in designs and with the pre-64 Model 70, there really, there's not much to find. This is the recoil lug. Everything is milled properly. The action itself is as perfect as an action needs to be. Here's my favorite, one of my favorite features, the trigger. This trigger may not break as cleanly as the current production trigger. That doesn't mean anything to me. This trigger has almost no moving parts. This is a very simple trigger and it can be adjusted here. Do I encourage people to adjust triggers? No. I've purchased more used rifles with messed up triggers that are completely fine. All you need to do is train yourself to the trigger that you own. 
You don't need to make it two pounds or four pounds. If it's six, seven, or even 12, just learn where it breaks and it'll serve you well for a lifetime. This is an excellent trigger and it's of course based on the Mauser design, which as you know, is unquestionably reliable. Uh, the bolt handle is good. This is the Pre-64, everything's smooth. You can watch my, one of my other videos on the Pre-64 Model 70. So anyway, getting back to my theme of returning to the principles that were right in the first place, this is now 2016, 2017, 300 Winchester Magnum. Um, at some point they started making this, um, they, they milled this uh, pattern on the bolt knob, which maybe theoretically helps prevent slipping, I don't know, it looks okay. And um, the action has the claw extractor, um, nothing wrong with that. Uh, as far as precision, here's the recoil lug. You can see, I'll stand them up. They went out of their way to make the current Alaskan as similar to the Pre-64 as they could. A couple of differences. This screw on the barrel, on the Pre-64, that doesn't appear on the Alaskan, but they went to the trouble of milling, this is all lathe work, of milling this radius so that the sight sits on an island and it has the same flip up sight and you'll see it's it, it is kind of a deja vu thing i mean they've they've done a great job of trying to return to where maybe they should have never left um, the floor plate i took a look at the floor plate of the post of the current production model works fine very uh, almost identical release. Naturally, I brought out my handy magnet, and that's aluminum. So it, it, you get the benefit of a one piece floor plate, which means only two screws, but you lose the advantage of steel. And here's the Pre 64, which has a different setup. So you can see this is kind of an intelligent design. Everything on this gun is, is steel. Oh, that's the pre-64 and that's why people pay what they do for pre-64 model 70s and um, here we have the magazine box magazine box I mean this is not a, a great piece of uh, manufacturing science or anything like that they both serve well that's steel that's steel as well so you're getting a steel um, magazine box uh, this is for a magnum action, which it is. Uh, again, getting back to the trigger, this trigger is the brake on the trigger, I have no doubt, is maybe superior to the brake on this trigger. But it has the housing, which so many triggers do. And I'm not saying this is a bad trigger, it's probably excellent. But do you really want to go into this? No, no you, you, don't, you don't touch this thing. It may be adjustable, but. I, I just wouldn't bother going into these kinds of details. Um, but they did it for a reason, and everybody's talking about triggers these days. Not that there ever was anything wrong with this trigger. It's, it, was, it was always good. Um, this one comes with those factory scope bases, which quite a few of you told me are factory, but I'm, I just don't know enough to say. Anyhow, these are turn-in bases as well. I got this, like I said, it's a used gun. Other than that, the markings, I mean, you've got Winchester on the receiver here, and you've got the uh, caliber designation and so on, and maybe some disclaimers, probably turning it too quickly for the camera. But, I mean, you can definitely see the heritage of this modern Alaskan as compared to the original Pre-64. And um, this one even was prepared for a receiver site. And this is kind of neat. I looked at this before filming. That part of the receiver is remarkably similar. And there are quite a few milling operations in here. And I mean, these are done beautifully. And the bolt release, you can see the, the heritage here, like I said. So in conclusion, um, again, I, I have not fired this 300, and 
I'm not running around shooting stuff at ranges um, with with firearms, partly because one generally hits the the secrets of rifling a barrel are well known. So then it's a question of whether you're shooting well that day or not. But I try to go into the details of the firearms themselves. I did do one thing that you'll find interesting. So we looked at recoil lugs and we looked at bedding with the glass bedding and so on. This is off of a Tika T3. I brought it out especially to show you one of the ways manufacturers save a whole whack of money. This is the recoil lug on the Model 70. The Tika T3 doesn't even have a recoil lug. The recoil lug is embedded in the stock and instead of the recoil lug sticking out of the action, there's actually a groove in the action. I almost took apart a Tika to show you. So when the action sits in here, this recoil lug then becomes effective. And why is there a recoil lug? Because when you fire the cartridge, I'm just saying this for the guys out there and ladies that don't know, um, this action wants to move backwards in the stock and there's so much recoil that it'll split the stock. So this is where the recoil is transferred to the wood and, and then the, the pressure is moved backwards to your shoulder. So where this happens, where the recoil hits the wood, has to be solid. And, and uh, th these recoil lugs, pre-64 or modern, or t like 2017 or 16, whatever this gun is, um, th these are as effective as you can get. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else. I mean, they put some machining here to make it look better. It's a cosmetic thing. The safety, you can see it's 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 the same on both. It's the it's the wing safety, and I mean you really can't in function you can't tell them apart. Um, these are excellent rifles, both of them. So uh, a conclusion, I think that the the current Alaskan is probably as close to a pre-64 Model 70 as you're going to get. Um, is it the same? No, I, I don't think they wanted it to be identical. It, they, they just wanted to bring back the recollection of a near perfect firearm, which is kind of unique because um, the pre-64 was, was exceptional. And um, it's always a matter of engineering and then some kind of coincidence. It's kind of like Mustang cars and a few other things. These pre-64s were just magic guns but they're obviously not being made anymore. And if you don't want to use something that maybe is of collector value, then probably I have to say um, the Model 70 Alaskan, just because of the features of it. I, as you know, I'm not rushing to buy polymer stocks. Uh, this has everything that you would need in a bolt action rifle. And uh, that's probably it. So I, I try to give guns ratings and I would give the current Model 70 like a 9 out of 10, which is, which is a high mark. It's, these, are, these are excellent rifles. And that is probably all I have to say. Thanks for watching.